Greetings and welcome to this edition of Positronic. Positronic. I am Barry P. Cook, and we're here to talk about the latest episode of Batwoman, entitled Gore on Canvas. So, uh, this episode uh, is continuing the plot points from the previous week. Uh, they're still looking for Kate. Uh, they're still trying to figure out what's going on with this painting by Jack Napier. Uh, so, let's get uh, into it. Toward that end uh, of finding the painting, which they think is going to lead to Kate, uh, Kate's father, the leader of the Crows, is um, dealing with some sort of a miscreant on the uh, streets of Gotham in, in a back alley, <laughs> trying to get information from him. And uh, it doesn't go terribly well. Things go a little south. And uh, he almost gets himself in a little uh, trouble there. But uh, Batwoman shows up and, uh, you know, takes the guy out, knocks him out, whatever. And uh, they have a little conversation. I was hoping that after the events of last week, they would get along better, but um, they're not getting along better. Uh, he says, what are you doing here, Batwoman? You know, he's all like condescending and whatnot. And she uh, explains that she's trying to, you know, uh, find Kate as well. But she says she doesn't want to work with him because she doesn't trust him. I guess they did talk about, you know, who uh, was probably behind this business with the painting. And it's an entity called The Collective. Now, I've not heard of them before. I looked them up to see if they have a history in DC Comics. I couldn't find one. So it's a, it's a completely new entity. Um, but uh, I guess we're gonna find out more about that. It was a cool scene in a way because she had a really cool entrance where she came down from like the behind the guy and uh, you know, uh, out of nowhere and just kicked his uh, rear end. And I said, ooh, nice entrance. And then after she was done talking to Kate's dad, she used the, you know, the bat line to just shoot off into the night, uh, you know, lift herself up off the ground. And I was like, and nice exit. <laughs> Before she exited, though, she, like I said, she had a conversation with Kate's dad and talked about how she doesn't really like him, uh, which, you know, he doesn't really like her, so it's mutual. But she said to him, yeah, well, you know, all crows are bastards. And she pointed to graffiti on the wall behind him that said A-C-A-B. Now, um, I recognize that immediately as a slogan that's used in the real world, or at least uh, an acronym that's used in the real world, A-C-A-B, and in the real world, it stands for all cops are bastards, and it's an anti-police slogan and an anti-police sentiment. So I wasn't really sure why they went there. I mean, I am, I suppose I am sure they're, they're sending a message. They want to have a message in this episode uh, that's, that's anti-cop. Now, um, it's fine that, that, you know, Ryan doesn't trust the police, as it were. You know, these heroes on these shows are vigilantes and their relationship with the police is often uh, not cordial. <laughs> so that makes sense. And she does have, you know, uh, uh, a bit of a chip on her shoulder that we've talked about before that I keep hoping is gonna dissipate uh, over the season. It's still too early to say that it's, that it's not. So I'm holding out hope that, you know, she'll get over this chip on her shoulder because it's not a becoming character and a hero. But for the moment, she's got this chip on her shoulder against the crows and it's understandable, but I thought that they could have that story element without referring to the real world so directly by basically co-opting a real world phrase um, and using it on the show. The thing about it is not so much that I don't agree with the message. <laughs> I'm not someone who necessarily disagrees that all cops are bastards, but I didn't think it's, it was a good idea for them to put it in the show because there's really only one conclusion someone can draw from it. And that is that they're trying to send the message, an anti-cop message. And um, whether they're trying to or not, actually, they are sending that message because that's what ACAB means and that's where they got it from. 
So, you know, it means all cops are bastards in the real world. So um, I don't know why they thought it was a good idea to put that in there because they're going to catch shit. Uh, you know, this is a show that has been hit with a lot of complaints from part of the viewing public, you know, uh, that sees the show as unduly or overly woke or overly SJW. And they're not doing themselves any favors by putting that acronym in there and, and saying, you know, all crows are bastards because it too easily lends itself to the real world equivalent. And I just think they could have, you know, included the element of Ryan not trusting the police uh, without coming right out and, and, and using an acronym that's used in, in real life. Uh, and they're gonna catch shit for it. And it's needless. They're not doing themselves any favors. They're not gonna win any friends uh, doing that. And um, I don't know, maybe they think they're safe because they've been renewed already, but you know, anything could happen. So I just thought it was a bad form. And there's more of it in this episode and I'll get to it in a minute. It turns out though that there's an art thief in Gotham by the name of Wolf Spider that's tied into all of this. And uh, they even show him in the beginning of the episode, like swinging in across Gotham, kind of like Spider-Man. I was like, who is that? So apparently it's this wolf, wolf spider person. And uh, they exist in the comics. Uh, in the comics, their name is Evan Blake. And uh, he's a rich playboy. And he's actually an old friend of Kate Kane's. And there's a scene where they sort of delve into that a little bit. But uh, yeah, he's an art thief. And he's, he's, he's chosen the moniker Wolf Spider for some reason. But anyway he figures into this episode. There's a, a scene um, after that all happens where uh, Ryan's kryptonite poisoning um, catches the attention of her ex, who I guess is now her girlfriend again, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, they're hanging out as it were, and the girlfriend notices her, her wound, and she tells her, you've gotta get that checked out. So um, she does get it checked out, Mary takes a look at it, and uh, I guess gives her some antibiotics or something and puts like a patch on it or whatever. Uh, and so, you know, I was like, oh, they addressed it, but I knew there's no way this is over. There's no way that's the end of it. You know, oh, you got a thing? Oh, go see Mary. Oh, it's fixed. Yeah, we know that's not happening. We know something's gonna come of it down the road. I just can't imagine what, like, what are they doing? <laughs> um, I don't know, hopefully it's something that'll pay off and be interesting. Um, we'll have to wait and see. But then, of course, there's further discussion of uh, the painting, the, uh, the painting by Jack Napier that uh, Kate had a picture of that they think can reveal the location of this island where this Sephora woman uh, has uh, Kate. And uh, as they're talking about Jack Napier, I think it was Kate's ex that works for the Crows who said, well, I know that Jack Napier goes by the Joker. And I was like, they said the J word. They said the J word. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was very cool, right? They, they mentioned the Joker by name. So um, I'm, I'm hopeful again that, that this is something they're gonna do something with. They could always disappoint me and do nothing with it, which would, would make me quite upset actually. But uh, it seems like they're laying the groundwork to do something with the Joker, to bring the Joker into the show. And I think that would be great. Um, uh, I'd like to see who they get for the part. I'd like to see what they do with it. That would be really cool. Um, Cause they didn't do anything cool in the first season. So for them to do some cool things uh, <clears throat> would be great. And like I said, in the first couple episodes, you know, in my reviews of the first couple episodes, they did mention a bunch of, um, you know, known DC villains, iconic DC villains. They had, uh, Zaz on the show. So I'm hoping that they're going to follow, you know, along and, and bring in the Joker and maybe bring in Scarecrow, who they mentioned. We'll have to see. I think that would be very cool. But we'll have to keep an eye on it. So now the, the Crows suddenly want to work with Batwoman to try and find this, uh, this painting, and possibly the wolf spider and all that business. So Ryan uh, has a little tete-a-tete with Kate's ex who works for the Crows. And, you know, she's saying, okay, I'm gonna work with you, but I don't like it. This is a, a, a one-time thing. 
you know, if you want to work with me beyond that, you'd have to, you know, um, drop your badge and not be with the crows anymore. Uh, I don't like the crows. There's a reason that when they gather together, they call it a murder, which is a reference to the phrase murder of crows, which, you know, is like a herd of cows, murder of crows. So again, I thought they didn't need to go there. Like, I get it. The character doesn't like the crows, but do we have to like hit the audience over the head with this, this message that the cops are bastards and the cops are murderers? It touches too close to real life. And this isn't supposed to be a real life mirror show, you know, like Law and Order, which holds up a mirror to real life. That's the purpose of the show. And you're going to see these issues examined on a show like that, uh, you know, where people call the cops murderers or people call the cops bastards. That's not supposed to happen. And then like a superhero show, um, it's not supposed to be like a real life, you know, mirror. Uh, at least not as much as these like, you know, police procedurals and uh, courtroom procedurals and so forth. So uh, I just don't know why they did that. I didn't think it was, I didn't think there was a reason for it. And again, I don't, the, the message doesn't bother me. I'm not like some pro cop guy who is offended by it, um, but they're just going to get shit for it. They're just going to get shit for it from the segment of the population that is really pro cop. And I don't think they're doing themselves any favors. I don't think they're gaining anything from it, either narratively or otherwise, that outweighs the drawbacks of doing it. That it's, I, just, I don't know why they're doing it. I don't think they should do it. But anyway, in this scene, Kate is, uh, not Kate, excuse me, Ryan is explaining to Kate's ex that, you know, among many things that she doesn't like about the crows, one of them is how they treat uh, you know, prisoners sometimes. This guy that uh, Kate's dad was trying to deal with, that Batwoman knocked out, was, you know, ended up being held by the crows. So they wanted to question him to try to find uh, information on how to find the island and find Kate. And he's not giving up the information. So they're kind of roughing him, roughing him up, you know, punching him. Uh, and whatnot, uh, as he's hanging from like a rafter and he doesn't give anything up. Uh, he actually, um, takes a suicide pill and kills himself. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I just was like, ah, oh, shit. And either Batwoman or Kate's ex looks uh, at the situation and goes, well, it's too late. Or, oh no, no, that's right. They were still asking him questions when Kate's dad realized he had uh, ceased to be, as it were. And he said, it's too late. And I was like, yeah, too late is right. <laughs> so that was kind of brutal. The thing that I didn't understand is that Ryan mentioned this event specifically as to why she doesn't like the police. Um, you know, that they rough up bad guys. And, and I don't think anybody should like that, but it is a tactic that Batman himself uses in the comics, in the movies, uh, you know, on, um, in the animated films, just, it's, it's something Batman does. He roughs up criminals pretty bad sometimes, um, you know, beating them up pretty bad. So I don't see how they're going to have this character be Batwoman and use his suit and use his car and all that stuff and be so against roughing people up. I just don't think it fits with the whole Gotham thing, the whole, you know, the whole Batman mythos. Um, you know, Batman had a, a, a hard line against killing, at least in some iterations of, of Batman. And I get that, but he didn't have any problem beating the crap out of people. So I don't know why they're making it an issue with Ryan. And, um, you know, how is she going to get information on other people? She's not going to rough people up. Like, I, that doesn't, doesn't work for me, for a superhero show, for a bat show. Um, even Superman, who's like the big blue boy scout, roughs people up. So, uh, yeah, I don't know where they're going with that. I, we'll have to see. I didn't think it was great. But the main plot of this episode, as you've probably guessed from what I've been saying, is 
all about trying to find Kate. Like it's not even a background thing now. Like in the first few episodes, it was background, but now it's like, it was the main plot of this episode. Like the whole thing was about finding Kate. And I'm like, why? Why are they, why? Why are they focusing on this? We know she's not coming back. It's gonna, how are they gonna let down from this? You know, not let the audience down, but like, how are they gonna come down from this and finally, you know, we know where it's going. It's, I don't know, it's absurd. I hope they were gonna drop it, but they're not. They seem to be uh, going right down that road, like hard. So I don't know, I'll keep watching. Um, but toward that end, now they wanted to have Ryan infiltrate an art show, like a co an underground art show, you know? And so she does this and she ends up having to change into the Batwoman costume, which has been stowed away beforehand in a bathroom at this facility where they're having the show. And she's trying to find it and, and they're talking to her in her ear. And um, the uh, Luke Fox character says, oh, it's, it's over there in like behind a false kind of wall or behind the vent next to that machine on the wall that sells um, um, products. And she's like, yeah, I get it. I'm like, he couldn't say condoms? Like what? Why couldn't he say condoms? It's just bizarre, not a big deal, but bizarre. Like you can say condoms on TV. So as far as I know, so it can't be that. Uh, why did they have the character like stumble over the word condom? I don't know, it seemed dumb to me. But she changes into the back room and suit just in time to catch Wolf Spider. Uh, making off with the Jack Napier painting that she was supposed to make off with. <laughs> and uh, she catches up to him and they have a fight in the facility there. And I, I'd have to watch it again, but it seems to me like the fight choreography was a little sloppy. Um, like you could see that it was choreography, you know what I mean? It, the, like you, you, you could clearly see that some of the blows weren't connecting. And uh, I thought it was a little sloppy, but anyway. But, you know, that was uh, sort of uh, the end of that because he, he runs off with the painting and uh, ends up getting run down by the cops, actually, by the crows. And uh, the painting um, falls into the hands of the crows. But Batwoman sort of has to come to the rescue of this guy because he's, like, going to die because they run him over with their car. So she takes him back to uh, Bat headquarters or the Batcave or whatever it is. And... After that, uh, Ryan goes home and she's, you know, looking in the mirror and she's feeling a little beat up or whatever. And she takes the bandage off her kryptonite poisoning thing that, um, that Mary had put on her. And she sees that this thing is just festering. Like it looks really bad. And I was like, well, I knew they weren't going to just leave it at, oh, what's, you know, antibiotics, put a bandage on. No, they're still going with that. So it's, uh, it's, it's getting worse, apparently. And I just, I'd love to know where they're going. You know, I said, I think in my last review that they have too many plots going on, right? There's the find Kate plot. There's the kryptonite poisoning plot. There's, you know, uh, a bunch of different plots. And I think when you have too many plots, it's going to start to turn into season one, which had no direction and which was just all over the place. Um, Good news is they seem to have rolled the Kate plot and the Alice plot into one thing. So it's not like a separate Alice plot. Although I shouldn't say that because at the end, she ends up basically teaming up with the person she was trying to find and kill for Sephora in order for Sephora to release Kate. And they sort of like take off. And they have uh, the, they actually have the Napier. Now, how did that? happened i don't know he, he stole the real one and the one the wolf spider stole it was a fake I, I don't i don't remember but they have the painting so where i don't know i guess that's part of the finding kate plot but it seems like it's also now she's got a thing with this guy because you know they alluded in the previous episode to the fact that she knows him from before even though she doesn't remember him she knows him from when they were on the island and that came up again in this episode and every time they touch each other when she touches him or he touches her for whatever reason um you know because at one point he's got her tied to a chair before they go off together uh because he doesn't trust her um before they you know talk uh and so he whenever he happens to brush against her or she brushes against him they each have a flashback 
to when they knew each other before on Sephora's island. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not the same flashback because that would be like a supernatural thing. Like they're having the same flashback, but they are having at least individual flashbacks when they touch each other. Like what's that? Like, I suppose, you know, a tactile sensation can make a memory go off, I guess, in your head, but like, this just seems like something else. And I, like, what are they doing? Like, I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, I was a little concerned after I watched this episode because up to this point, I had started to like this show, you know, this season. I was like, okay, this is a decent show now. And this episode kind of did a bunch of stuff that made me think uh, uh, that was short lived and they're starting to go off, you know, the beam, you know. Uh, they're starting to go off the trail here and it's going to start to get bad again. So I'm hoping I'm wrong. We'll have to see with next, uh, the next episode if they're back to a somewhat better form, but uh, at the moment we don't know. Anyway, that's it uh, for this review. Uh, I will be back uh, soon, but for now I'm just going to say as usual, uh, peace and long life.